Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio, so today it's time to update our list of the top 10 GXs in the Pokemon trading card game. I did this list when Sun and Moon was released. I think, as long as you guys want to watch these videos, and obviously comment section, like button, etc. to tell me that you do, I think we should update this every time a new set releases. Here is the list I gave you last time. It's not a good list. I tried my very best, and go back, I'll put a link to the last video in the description. I had good reasons for my listing, but Umbreon was not number one, although it saw a fair amount of play. Espeon, I didn't even put on the list, and Incineroar at number nine, shall we say, little bit of bias. So, now we're going to have a look at the top 10 GXs with Guardians Rising Legal. And remember, new GXs like Ho-Oh, etc. that are coming in Burning Shadows are not legal. We are only looking at GXs that were either released in Sun and Moon, Guardians Rising, or promos in the meantime. Couple of honourable mentions before we start then. First of all, Tapu Coco GX from Guardians Rising. It's a new card. It's got a really nice ability that allows you to grab all of the electric energy on the field, pop it on him, and then put him into the active. Plus, he can do a fair amount of damage. I like him. But I just don't think he's got what the other ones have got. I do like the 130 for free energy. I do like the ability. I do like the GX attack that does 50 damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. And the fact that it stops them putting energy on their Pokemon. But I just don't think it's got what the others have got. Our other honourable mention is Umbreon GX. Yes, I had him at number one in the old video. And the reason is simple. He had his time. He saw tournament success. He top cut very big tournaments like the London International Championships. But he's just gone out of favour. He's an energy denial deck when we've got better options now like Sylveon and Lapras. And I just don't think he's going to see much play going forward. So he's an honourable mention only. In at number 10, a new card, Alolan Ninetales GX from Guardians Rising. Honestly here, ladies and gentlemen, on his own, he's a little bit underwhelming. The first attack, 50 damage for a double colourless isn't great. 60 would KO things like Rowlet, but this only does 50. 160 is good, but discarding 2 energy every turn you can't do forever, although Aqua Patch really helps you to do it for longer. I love the GX attack where you just take all the damage on you and put it on your opponent. Means if they're not getting a one hit KO and you've got 210 HP, they really need to be thinking about attacking at all. But really here, it's a meta game call. This has seen a lot of play and a lot of success in Japan. They get the cards a few months before us, so they've already had a few tournaments. It's really good against Volcanion. The Volpix that allows you to search for Pokemon without using items helps it against Garbodor because you can set up using fewer items. And when you're not playing Garbodor, you can use Aqua Patch to attach a whole bunch of energy and smash. It's not great in its own right, but the format we've got at the moment and the success it's seeing in Japan gives it a spot at number 10. In at number 9, Drampa GX. Now, speaking of Garbodor, this is a card which has seen a bunch of success in Japan when it's coupled with Garbodor. As a side note here, and I think I've already made this quite clear, I'm going to be looking at Japanese results and cards that have proven to be good in Japan. This is going to go in their favour. 20 damage plus discarding a special energy for just one energy is really, really nice. With a choice band, you're doing 50. 150 for free energy if any of your bench Pokemon are damaged is really quite good. And then, of course, choice band does 180, which will KO most EXs. And I know people aren't loving the GX attack. Just gives you a hand refresh, shuffle your hand into your deck, draw 10 cards. But here's the thing, if your opponent doesn't play an end, you've got a hand of 10 cards. And if your opponent does play an end, that's still okay. Why would you be using this GX attack unless you really had nothing in your hand to use?
In at number eight, we've got Espeon GX that I'm slightly embarrassed to say didn't even make the list first time round. I've been proven wrong. I'm not upset about this. It's got the same typing and energy as Garbodor, which means it fits nicely there. It's got the Energy Evolution Eevee, allowing you to evolve up straight away, so you can use this on the first turn of the game. 30 damage plus Confusion is really good for disrupting your opponent. They've either got to retreat, get out the active another way, or flip a coin for Confusion. If Tails, your attack fails and you take 30 damage. Add a double colourless energy and you can do Psychic. 60 damage plus 30 more for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. And the GX attack allowing you to drop 10 damage counters wherever you like is no slouch either. It's gonna see play with Garbodor. It's been a really good tech in Mega Mewtwo decks. It's earned its way in at number 8. In at number 7, Lapras. Did make the top 10 last time, but came in at number 10. I thought Lapras was a little bit underwhelming, but you know what? It's proven it's worth. 190 HP is high for a basic. Add in rough seas where you're healing 30 damage per turn. Add in fighting fury bout to put you up to 230, although field blower is now a bit of a threat to that. And you just sit there, and some turns you use blizzard burn to attack. Some turns you use Collect to draw cards, other turns you just play cards like Crushing Hammer, Enhanced Hammer and Delinquent and run your opponent out of resources. Lapras is a very difficult card to KO and as a disruption deck has seen a lot of success. I think it's going to see a big downturn in play because of cards like Sylveon and like Alolan Ninetales, but it's done enough to get in at number 7 for now. In at number 6, we have got Tauros GX. Tauros has seen a whole bunch of play with Decidueye, it's going to see a whole bunch of play with Garbodor, and it's just the combination of Rage and Mad Ball GX. Rage does 20 damage plus all the damage on you for a double colourless energy. Mad Ball does 30 damage times the amount of damage counters on you. You've got 8 damage counters on you, do 240 damage. It means that if your opponent can't one hit KO you, and Fighting Fury Bout comes in nicely here, you are hitting them back twice as hard. Or should I say, three times as hard. Yes, Field Blower's coming out. Yes, that's going to make Fighting Fury Bout less good. Yes, it's going to mean that your opponent is more likely to be able to get a one hit KO, but it's still good enough to come in at number six. Down from four. In at number 5, it was number 2 last time, it's number 5 now, it's Lurantis GX. Now, this is the one card on the list where I've taken a bit of a liberty. This has not seen a huge amount of play. Now, it did with Vileplume see some success in Expanded. I just think this card is too good not to have in the top 5. Forest of Giant Plants evolves it up straight away. Add to that the fact that you can combine it with Vile Plume, or you can combine it with Decidueye. It's got a really nice first attack, 40 damage, and attach 2 energy from your discard to your bench. And it does 120 for free energy while healing 30. This has not seen a huge amount of play. Maybe I'm being a little bit over the top in my praise here. But honestly, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of potential, there are very few cards that have got as much as Lurantis, and I'm still willing to put it in at number 5. And I'm going to draw a line here, ladies and gentlemen, because I think the top 4 GXs are really in a league of their own. In at number 4, a new entry for Sylveon GX from Guardians Rising. Why Sylveon so good? Because of the first attack that just lets you search for any free cards in your deck. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Search for any free cards, put them into your hand, and then shuffle your deck for a single energy. Don't forget the energy evolution Eevee. So you attach a fairy energy to Eevee, search and evolve to Sylveon, and you can use Magical Ribbon on the first turn of the game. And this is really a replacement for Lapras. Because you search for whichever disruption cards you want, be it Crushing Hammer, Delinquent, Team Skull Grunt, etc. Run your opponent completely out of resources, and when they're on the ropes and they've got nothing left to do, just hit for 110 every turn. And in terms of GX attacks, it doesn't get much meaner than just making your opponent pick up two of their Pokemon, wasting all the evolutions they've had, wasting all the energy attachments they've had, and so on.
This is a mean card, and when you play against it enough, you'll learn to hate it. And I think that's deserving of coming in at number four. In at number three, Lycan Rock GX Midnight Form from Guardians Rising. And some people are going to think I've got this a bit high. Some people are going to think I should switch this with Sylveon, and maybe they're right. But like Sylveon, this is seeing a lot of success in Japan. Unlike Sylveon, it's not really being a deck in its own right. It's being combined with a bunch of stuff like Raichu and goodness knows what else because of the ability Bloodthirsty Eyes. It's a Lysander, or long-time players will remember Bright Look from Luxray GL Level X. It's got a really nice GX attack, 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That's going to get a one-hit KO at some point during the game. But a free Lysander, especially when we get to September and Lysander has probably rotated out of the format, Lycanroc is going to see play and some people are going to play it just for the ability because we won't have Lysander anymore. That's why I think it's so good and that's why I've got it in at number three. In at number two, down from number three, we've got Decidueye. And as a side note here, Decidueye should have been number one on the previous list. And honestly, it shouldn't have been terribly close. It's a grass Pokemon, so we've got Forest of Giant Plants. And although 90 for free energy is okay... And although searching your discard for free cards and putting them in your hand is pretty nice, it's all about the ability Feather Arrow. Being able to drop two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon mid-turn and doing it for every Decidueye and being able to evolve them easily with Forest of Giant Plants has really led this to dominate the format since its release. Maybe it'll see less play in the future because of things like Garbodor and Sylveon, and it'll definitely see less play when Forest of Giant Plants rotates out. But for the moment, I'm happy calling it the second best Pokemon GX we have. And number one, and I really don't think you can argue with number one, Tapu Lele GX. It's got the ability that allows you to search your deck for a supporter card, and then you've got whichever one you want. Got nothing in your hand? Grab a Sycamore and set up. Your opponent's got three cards in their hand? Grab a Delinquent, discard their entire hand. You know your opponent's just searched for a bunch of energy? Play a Team Skull Grunt to get rid of that energy. And that's before we even look at the fact that it's got a really good attack for two energy which can be used for a double colorless or splashed into any deck 20 damage for each energy attached to both active pokemon decent attack really good ability and i know we had this with jirachi in the past but jirachi had 90 hp and gave up two prizes tapu lele's got 170 hp no weakness and gives up two prizes oh yeah and it's got a really good attack I don't think there is any question that Tapu Lele is the very best Pokemon GX that we have at the moment. But you know the deal, ladies and gentlemen, there is a comment section. And as with all of my top 10s, feel free to disagree, but in context. Don't just tell me Drampa needs to be higher, tell me what you would put down, etc. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter, at the Wassie. The most important thing as always, and will always be, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.